Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we are working on our fantasy castle on the floating island. This is part five and we'll be working on the doors, the windows and a few bricks. And we'll be taking a close look at the shrink wrap modifier. Okay, so this is where we got to last time, although I have slightly increased the loop cuts down my castle, just because I wanted to give it more of a curve, I think it flows a bit better. But do remember, if you're adding any loop cuts, don't increase the poly count too much if you want to send it to a game engine. So I want to add a door, and I think a great place is down the front here, as if there's a pathway coming from somewhere over here. So I'll shift right click on this area here. Now there's a couple of ways of doing this. You could add a cube and scale it and then reposition it into the right location and then add another cube. So duplicate that one and then just sort of manually put it into position around our curvy castle. But it's a little bit awkward because of the shape. So I'll undo that and instead I'll add a plane. So what I'm going to do with this plane is shrink wrap it to the shape and the curve of the castle. So it's nice and easy for us to build our door. And if we want to change the shape of our castle slightly to suit the door or anything like that, we've got the shrink wrap modifier that will move it with it. So the first thing you will want to do with the plane is certainly make it smaller, but line it up so that it's in line, but just above your castle. So I can rotate around the Z in this case and move perpendicular and then rotate just so we're above the shape of the castle and if you need to move it away slightly. It mustn't intersect the castle and I'll show you why with the shrink wrap modifier now. So click on the modifiers, add modifier and the shrink wrap is in the middle of the deform. Nothing happens yet because we haven't chosen a target for it to shrink wrap to. So shrink wrap is when it sort of sticks to an object and it will follow along the surface of the object as well. So under target, if I choose my picker and choose the cylinder, you can see straight away it shrink wraps to it. Now there are some slight issues. If I go into edit mode, you can see where it was originally. And when in edit mode, if you want to see the results, you have to click on this where it says on cage. So the results are that it's inside. But you can see actually the vertices are still just on the outside there. If I press one to show those vertices, you can see them there but the whole shape is actually inside. So what will be helpful is if we put it above the surface rather than on surface here. So if I click on this drop down and go above surface and then choose the offset and push it up slightly, it will move it above the surface like this. And we can push it all the way until we're past our castle wall. Now if I click on the on cage again, we can show the original position and you can see it's changed its position slightly because the modifier is making it shrink wrap to the castle and then pushing it out. Now if for any reason you have this inside your castle walls, you can get slight strange anomalies on the outside. So just be careful of that and make sure your plane is on the outside. So let's just zoom out and see what that looks like. Now that's far too big for a brick so I can scale this down. And I'm doing this in edit mode. And I think a brick size is going to be about there. Just make sure, zoom out, make sure you're happy with that. And our brick might be slightly elongated as well. So I'll grab this and make it a bit more like that. So we've got our original here and that's the final result. Now, one thing that's very useful here is to turn snapping on. So when I move these vertices, they will actually snap to the faces of the castle walls. And you can use that up here with this magnet option here and the drop down menu where it says face. Don't worry too much about these. It won't matter too much. But now we can grab these and they will snap to the walls and we can change the shape if we want to of our plane to make it a bit more natural and organic. But all the time it's snapping to the surface of the castle walls. So the shrink wrap modifier used in combination with snapping will help us to reposition. If I don't use snapping here, I might accidentally move one of these on the inside and get those sort of anomalies. But with snapping enabled and the shrink wrap modifier, it's snapping its faces to the castle walls and then shrink wrapping it to make sure it sits above like this. Now you might be thinking this is just a flat surface and it's sticking out from the castle wall. That doesn't look anything like a brick. Well, it's quite easy to change them into a brick, add modifier and then solidify. We can then turn the thickness up and it becomes a brick. Remember, you can always change the offset here if you don't want it sticking out so far and you might not therefore need so much thickness. Not that it makes too much difference. So now what we can do is we can select this face and shift D to duplicate and move it upwards. And I'm still in edit mode, so this is still one object. Now it's a little bit tricky to see my vertices, so I can press the on cage button for the solidify as well and the shrink wrap 
and then press one. And now I can move these verts around into a sort of different brick shape. Then when I'm happy, shift D to duplicate that face. It's a little bit tricky with the shrink wrap and the snapping on. Don't worry too much about that. Just move slowly and you'll be fine. So zoom out and check that you're happy with the size. And it may be that our castle structure is a bit too curvy at the bottom here. So what I can do is come out of edit mode there, go into object mode, click on our castle and go into edit mode with the castle. And at this point I can change and edit the shape and the rocks will move along with the shape because they're shrink wrapped to the castle walls. So any changes I make, they'll move with them. Again, just be aware of your output, whether it's going to a game engine and whether you want to add that many loop cuts. So continuing this into edit mode, duplicate them and move them into position. I'll just select these three and duplicate those. Now you can see I'm getting slight anomalies here. So I'll move them about there and then X-ray view so I can see this one and you can see it's snapped in a weird position here, but I've got snapping turned on so I can just press G to grab and know that it's gonna hit the front face there. So we've got some fun looking wall and just adapt it as you see fit. And you can always do a loop cut in one of these if you want some slightly different shaped bricks. Now it does look like I've got two vertices here, which I have, but that's the solidify modifier. So when you select one, it's obviously moving both of them because it's just the modifier. Okay, so that's quite a fun looking archway for the door. We can use the same technique for the actual door itself. We don't really need to cut out from our castle wall. We can just place the doors on top, but we can just duplicate one of these faces, three to go into face mode, shift D to duplicate, move it across, and then P to separate by selection. And now that's a separate object. So if I go into object mode now with tab, choose that object, I can then go back into edit mode and change it up a bit. And this is gonna be a long plank for my door. and I'll have several long planks. Now we don't want this to be quite as thick as the bricks. So I can then change the thickness of this solidify modifier, but it's just bringing it backwards at the moment. So I need to change the offset as well. And that's of my shrink wrap modifier. And then select that face, duplicate it. And for this, I'll need to go into wireframe mode to select those verts and move them into position. So we've got a wooden door and some stone rocks around it. Now it may be that you can see some of the background of the castle walls, so we may need to change the material in the background here to something that's quite dark, but we will do that at a later date. So you can do exactly the same technique for windows on each of your turrets. The bigger one might want more windows. And if you're doing a low poly version instead of a hand painted version of the castle, then you'll want to duplicate a few of these as bricks around the place. So I'll do the process once more. So shift right click to find a position, Shift A to add and adding a plane. Then I'm gonna rotate this one by the Y axis 90 degrees. That oh, was actually the X, so R, Z 90. And then scale it down until it's above the surface. So I can zoom in on my object with period key on my numpad and just move that just slightly outside the object. Now I can't move it and that's because I've still got snapping on. So just turn snapping off here or the shortcut is Shift tab. But I'll just turn it off for the moment G and then move that outside my object. Add a modifier, add the shrink wrap modifier. Select my target, which is the castle. Make sure it's above surface. And then I can change the offset. And I'll go somewhere around there. Add modifier, solidify. So it makes it solid. And then up the thickness. Now this one's going the opposite way. And that's our face direction. But the solidify modifier will sort out the normals, so you don't have to worry too much about that, but just be aware that you might be going inwards or outwards. So we've got our stone, but we need to change the shape a bit because it's very square. So let's go up to snapping again and move the vertices around. And again, you might want to add a loop cut in to give them a bit of variation. Now you can go to object mode and then shift D, duplicate it and move it into position then back into edit mode and change it around so they're two different objects if you want them to be. However, if I make any changes to my modifiers, it's only going to affect one of them, not both of them. But if I undo that, into edit mode and select these faces, shift D. Now if I change these modifiers, they will both change together. And that's why I'm keeping them as one object. I'm going to turn my 
on cage option on for both so that I can now adapt these vertices. So let's take a look at how we're getting on. I'll just quickly change the castle material under the material properties here and just put the roughness right up. Then I'll select all of these, make sure my bricks are selected last and press Ctrl L to copy the materials. And on the castle, I'll shade smooth. You can't see the rocks particularly well because of the light. So we might want to just turn up the ambient occlusion over here in the render tab, click on the ambient occlusion and maybe turn the distance up so we can see a bit of shading around our rocks. And lastly, on that material, I'll just turn it down so it's not so bright. I'll move my cursor to somewhere else as well so we can start to see these rocks sticking out. Now, obviously, when we set the colors and things, we can change the color of these rocks so they stick out more. You don't need to do rocks everywhere. Just a few around the place will give it a really nice look and vary it as well. So sometimes there's two and sometimes maybe there's three. And always remember the sort of brick formation where they're slightly offset from each other. Now, you don't need to do these bricks if you're doing the hand painted technique because you can paint these bricks on. But if you're going for a low poly look, then they're a great addition. You can, of course, use a bit of both the low poly look and some hand painted, which I'll go into in the later episodes. So you can now have a go at doing the windows and some more bricks. And do let me know if you have any more ideas about what we can have over on the side here. People have suggested trees and bushes. Someone has even suggested a knight. So thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.